Hello and welcome from Bold Park. In this video we're going to do a very simple slope analysis in QGIS and we're going to do it for the park that's behind me. Now the data we're going to use comes from a freely available digital elevation model so you can download this and follow along. To do this analysis, we're going to need the latest version of QGIS, which is 3.4 for me. We're going to need a digital elevation model, which is going to give us our topography. We're going to look at a plugin called 3Js just to get a 3D model. And finally, some decent satellite imagery or a base map is always good for illustration purposes. The steps we need to take to do our slope and aspect analysis are very straightforward. You first of all want to identify your study area, and for me it was a park just outside Perth with some interesting rugged features. You're going to want to get a source of topographical data. I'm using a LiDAR derived digital elevation model, but you can also use satellite imagery, no problem. We're going to do a hill shade, and that's just to emphasize and make, the, uh, make that slope and aspect that bit more interesting. Our slope analysis or itself is going to give us the degree of inclination of a feature relative to the horizontal plane. And once that's done, we can look at the aspect, which is the compass direction of that slope. With the slope and aspect together, we can combine them with the raster calculator to create one single image of aspect and slope together. And it's a very trippy looking image, but if you let me explain. The color or the hue represents the direction of the slope. The saturation of that color, or how bright or not bright it is, represents the degree of the slope. So it's just a, a really neat way of giving ourselves a 2D interpretation of something that's quite complex in the 3D real world. Okay, let's get started. So we're gonna be using QGIS for this analysis. If you haven't got um, a copy downloaded, get to QGIS.org and download the latest version. You can also support QGIS, which is open source with a small do donation. So in QGIS itself, We've got our, our study area, and this is Bold Park, and it's just a very simple polygon I've made earlier. We're going to want to get some imagery, and you can use any satellite imagery you like. I'm going to use a web map service from Landgate, which is an Australian organization. And I will put this URL in the description below. Okay. So connect and select that image and add it to our project. So with that in place, we're gonna wanna get some um, source of information for the topography, which is gonna be a digital elevation model. Now the easiest way to do this would be to get an SRTM tile. You can get this through various sources. There's a plugin in QGIS that does it, but this, um, this website has a really easy, straightforward interface. Just select the grid you want and download it. And now this is 90 meter resolution, so in our case, it's not actually good enough for what we want for our park. So we're not going to use it in this instance. What we're going to use instead is uh, a LiDAR derived digital elevation model available on data.gov.au. It's quite a large file to download, but it is broken up into states. So we've already downloaded Western Australia Zone 50. So let's bring that into our project. And this is much better resolution. If we zoom in, use our raster tools just to stretch the min max to the layer extent, we can see the pixels better and we can see that they're about five meters per pixel. So that's just, that's just great. Let's zoom back out to our layer. Now we're going to want to um, clip the extent of this layer because it is quite a large layer to work with. First of all, we'll zoom back into our study area. Raster, extraction, clip, air, clip raster by extent, select was 50. And the extent is going to be the canvas extent. Uh, all the other settings, we're going to leave them as they are and we're just going to save it temporarily. So now we've got a much smaller raster to work with, so every time it renders, it's going to be that bit quicker. And now we're going to do some hill shade. Now hill shade is just going to emphasize the terrain. 
and before we start, something to take note of is that the scale here, if you're using a, a raster image that the projection units are in meters, you can just leave this at one. If your raster has a projection where the units are in degrees, which the SRTM data does, you're going to have to use an appropriate scaling factor here, but we're not going to go into that in this tutorial. So or Perth DEM, if we go to properties and information, we can see that the unit's in meters, so we're good to go. So a vertical exaggeration, we're just going to do this, set this to two, just to give it a bit more emphasis on the, um, the vertical scale. Everything else we're going to leave the same. And there's our hill shade. I'm going to drop the hill shade just below our imagery. And in symbology for hill shade, we're going to bump up the brightness and the contrast. And then in imagery, if we set the blending mode to multiply, it's just going to take everything that's underneath it and give us more of an emphasis on that terrain. So if we switch off the hill shade, we can see exactly that effect. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a quick eyeball using QGIS to 3Js, and you can download this plugin in Manage and Install Plugins. We're going to set WAS50 as the base DEM, and we're going to set our scene set settings up to, let's say, 2. And that will just be an exaggeration. Solid color, I tend to use black instead of sky. Apply, OK. Now, something I've come across is that if you were not to use WAS50 and you were used going to use the clipped layer, there's a bit of a glitch where you can see here it's stretched down over the sides. So we're not going to use that layer to be our DEM. going to turn off the sides and here we're just going to bring up the resolution to 400%. It's going to take a bit to render so we're going to pause it here. There we go, much better resolution. We can really see that interesting terrain in the park with some slopes mainly in almost a north-south direction, maybe northwest-southeast. So let's close that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually move on to the slope analysis itself. So we're going to do one more clip of this DEM for this analysis. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to clip the raster by a mask layer. And that mask layer is the park. And everything else we can leave as it is. So now we can see our elevation for the park itself it goes from, from 2 meters to 84 meters. And that's what we need. So our slope analysis up to raster, analysis and slope. And we're going to use the clipped, the last layer we created. Everything else we're going to leave as it is. Um, you can express the slope in percentage, but we're going to leave it at degrees. And you can use different algorithms. Run that and save it temporarily. Now we can see our slope goes from 0 to 52 degrees in the park. That's great. We could sim add some symbology to this with some pseudocolor. Just going to invert the color ramp. And something like that. So you can see the steeper areas up here to the north of the park. But that's not what we're aiming for here. So let's now move on and do our aspect analysis. Analysis aspect, exact same procedure couple more options, we're just going to leave everything as they are, save it temporarily. So the aspect goes from 0 to 360 degrees. So the color from white to black um, is representative of the direction of the slope. So the next step we need to do to combine 
this mo these models into a slope aspect is to reclassify. And reclassifying essentially takes ranges of values from the aspect and ranges of values from the slope and gives them a score. So we're going to start with slope. And what we're going to do is open our processing toolbox and look for or-reclass. And this is very straightforward. Select the slope layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a rule to reclassify it, written like this. So slope from 0 to 5 degrees, we're going to give it a score of 0. And on, on through the slopes from 48 to 54, we're going to give it a score of 9. And we've just broken up those evenly. Everything else we're going to leave as it is and run and save this temporarily. So now it's essentially the exact same data just being reclassified into scores going from 0 to 9. And we can just rename this so we know what it is. Reclassify to slope. And we're going to do the exact same thing for our aspect. Now for aspect, we're going to use ranges in the and give it a score f in the tens. So 0 to 22 degrees is going to be a score of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and so on and so forth. So we've actually broken it up into eight scores, which is um, our cardinal markers and the intervals between them. So let's run that. Close, and now we get a really nice picture of the slope and the direction. That it's bearing. So we want to use equal intervals for this one. And we'll use 80 equal intervals. So each of these colors represents north. North northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, and so on and so forth. Now with the reclassified rasters, in order to combine them into one raster that can be a model of slope and aspect, we're going to use the raster calculator. Very simply, we take our reclassified aspect and add it to our reclassified slope. We're going to have to define an output layer. We're going to call it aspect and slope. Everything else we're going to leave the same. Our expression is valid, so let's just run that. And now we have our final model, which is aspect and slope. Now it doesn't have any symbology at the moment, so it doesn't mean anything. But we can see it goes from 10 to 89. And what we're going to do is, we've already created the style because it, it is quite time consuming, but I'll give you an idea of what it is we're looking at. So we've got our north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, northwest, and each of those are represented by a color. And the score is the 10s, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s. In those 10s and 20s and 30s, you've got um, the second digit, which represents the degree of the slope. And the degree of the slope then is r is represented by a shade. So the brighter the color, the higher degree of that slope. We've actually just grayed out the lower levels of the slopes just because we don't want to be too overbearing on our final image. So if we apply that to our model, we have what we were looking for. So one way to show this is put back on our imagery, but we don't want color in there, so let's make that grayscale, just so all the focus is on those colors in the park. Let's put on our hill shade, and let's run our model again. And that is it. So if we look at the profile of the park from different angles. Looking from the south, we can only really see purple. We start to see the greens. Coming around, we start to see the yellows, then the pinks and the reds. And what we, what we want to be able to see is that the brighter the colors, the steeper the slope. And that is basically one way of demonstrating 
a 3D terrain in a 2D image. Thanks for watching and if you have any comments or suggestions please just write them below and subscribe to the channel for more QGIS tutorials.